wait a little bit for more people to join. They're pouring in. Give it a couple more minutes here. More people are joining. If any of you guys have questions throughout this process, feel free to comment and we will try to answer them to our best ability at the end of this presentation or follow up with you after uh, with any answers that we need to find necessary. Somebody asked if uh, it's warm enough to get in the lake yet, and it is definitely not warm enough to get in the lake yet. We were up there a couple of days ago, and uh, there's still snow on the ground. <laughs> but the ski resort just got four feet of snow, so if you want to go and uh, get about a couple feet of powder, I was just up there last weekend and some of the best skiing of the year so far. The webinar will be probably between 45 minutes and an hour, but we record it. So if you can't make it the whole time, we will send it out um, to everyone here once we finish up, get a little edits done and our marketing team will get it out to all, everyone. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started a little bit after uh, four here. So uh, welcome, everyone. Glad you guys are here. So we are uh, super excited to launch this fund. We've already got a good amount of traction um, on the fund. We've already got investors committed and we are um, very excited. So we are breaking ground on the tribute in Sandpoint, Idaho, small town with the biggest ski resort and the biggest lake in Idaho. Um, you can see the site here on the left there. So um, actually doesn't look like that today. We've already um, done about 1.8 million in dirt work and we are um, excited to bring this project to life. So we're going to jump right into it. All right. Uh, quick little disclaimer. So this project and the stuff is proprietary. We are developers, investors, but um, we are looking for investors to invest with us and take this journey with us. But also, you know, every single investment um, involves risk. So just a little disclaimer here to review. Um, and then meet the panel. So we'll start off at uh, with uh, John Sr., our CEO. That's me. Hi, everyone. Awesome. And then we've got uh, John S., our CEO. How's it going? Excited. And then I'm Anthony Walker. I'm the CEO, CIO, and we are all um, general partners in this project. So we're we're happy for your trust and for you to be here today. All right, a little bit about our track record. John Senior is going to tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, so um, Cornerstone, we are a multifamily operator. We're based out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Uh, currently, our markets are in North Idaho, uh, Montana, and down in Central Oregon and in Portland area. Uh, we like these markets because there's a lot of geographical restrictions and there's a lot of growth. So not a lot of land to develop, which helps with uh, competition. Uh, and they're also very desirable. We have a lot of folks still moving up to the Northwest and we're seeing that uh, continue uh, now. Uh, currently our portfolio consists of 14 different properties valued at about 116 million at the end of 2023. Obviously that's gonna change as we develop uh, some of our land that we've got <clears throat> in our portfolio already, such as this one. Uh, our leadership team has over 100 years of combined uh, management and development experience. Uh, pleased to report that Cornerstone was just voted most visionary developer in North Idaho. Uh, so that's a pretty uh, exciting thing for us that just came out here this last week. Um, we have over 100 investors and 50% of them have invested in two or more projects with us, which is which is great for us. Um, we love uh, the opportunity to connect with our investors and develop a long-term relationship. John and Anthony and I are here for the long haul and, and our job is to create the best opportunity and the best returns for everyone. Uh, we have yet to sell a project. Uh, typically, uh, we like to hold projects long-term long as they produce great returns. Uh, a lot of times what happens is, is we'll see long-term appreciation. We'll be able to refinance, take some equity out in cash and reposition that and, and give that tax, tax free to our investors. And, and of course, we always have an exit strategy. So if uh, we get a crazy offer, which uh, can happen, uh, and if somebody wants it real bad, we'll sell it real bad to them. So that's kind of how we operate. Uh, we've never lost a dollar of, of principal and, and funds that have been invested with us. Uh, currently, we have 329 units under management and 347 in development. We're delivering uh, in 2024, another 68 unit building uh, at a Missoula. That's probably gonna be a midsummer delivery. We've raised over 53 million in equity um, and this is our third opportunity zone. We love opportunity zones because of the tax deferral and the opportunity it creates. Right. And senior, why don't you tell me a little bit about your past, kind of your, your banking experience, your multifamily experience, just to understand kind of track record. And, you know, we may have been founded in 2017, but senior's been doing this for many, many more years than that. Yeah, so I'm a fourth generation real estate uh, professional. Um, this is my 34th year in the business. Um, I've done almost everything there is to do in this business. I learned construction working for my dad. Uh, and then from there, went to uh, uh, the finance end of it and learned residential and commercial uh, lending, uh, secondary markets, agency financing. Uh, Wall Street, stuff like that. Um, also, I'm a licensed real estate professional, I'm a real estate broker, and owned and managed a mortgage company for a long time. I partnered with several big builders and um, I, and then also developed several thousand uh, projects on my own before we started Cornerstone. John and I started Cornerstone in 2017. And uh, our team has grown to what you see here. Uh, and we were able to successfully navigate uh, COVID and all kinds of challenges. And, and so we're excited to bring this one to life. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. So property details, we're going to jump into it now. So uh, we acquired this property um, back in 2021. And so we are rebuilding a four-story elevator service, two buildings. Each building is about 84,000 square feet, um, 73 units per building with ground level amenities. So we're going to have a coffee shop, co-working space that will also monetize a 24-hour gym for our tenants and potentially um, community members. 
we're going to have a rec area and a potential other couple of potential other um, amenities that we're working with the city on. Additionally, we'll have individual storage um, lockers that will not be um, typically you see them on the patios. These will actually be ground floor. So if they have kayaks, bikes, they're not hauling them up elevators and stairs. They're just going to be able to put them in their locker. Um, additionally, this is an opportunity zone. So that gives you, um, if you have capital gains, it gives you some pretty serious tax benefits, something you'll want to talk to us and your CPA about. Um, but, but an incredible opportunity if that's something that you're looking for. Um, and so this has a good product mix. So we kind of worked with our property manager, um, looked at the city needs. This community has had a 1% vacancy over the last decade. Right now, there's a little bit of supply that the um, big resort built and then a local developer built, but we'll be delivering in a low supply market again when this project's done. And um, and so with that, that's kind of how we came up with our unit splits to kind of meet the market needs. All right, John's going to jump into our timeline. Yeah, so as Anthony talked about at the beginning, you know, we've, uh, we've been in this process for a few years now. And it's definitely been worth the wait. And uh, it's a good time for us to bring this to you guys. So we came to this deal. Actually, I think it was about this time three years ago. Anthony called me one day and said, hey, there's this property that just came for sale in Sandpoint, the place I grew up. I've driven by this, you know, for my whole life. This would be a lifetime deal. And we were like, wow, this is this is great. Great property. Um, just came to the market and we were able to successfully navigate closing with one of our investors for that in September of 21. Um, we started the pre-construction process that fall and worked through just kind of some basic plans with our architect and uh, looking at the zoning and look, think, looking at uh, different ways we can match the community need and what the city wanted. And so 22, uh, we ended up actually getting our special use approval, which kind of mirrored the zoning that we already had. And then we also did some site work and structural soil, which Anthony mentioned earlier. Uh, we spent a lot of time and money, uh, I think it was about 1.8 million on all that, um, just to remove that top that top layer of that dirt. I think it was five feet of dirt, um, often uh, refilling that with structural dirt for uh, buildings. And this was something we we had the opportunity to do when the weather was, was good at the time and um, get it done before we did foundations. So it significantly saves us time for when we get our permits uh, to start foundations very quickly. Um, last year, 2023, we uh, intensely worked on our plans, um, working with our architect and engineers. We made a lot of changes um, that kind of reflected the market. You know, 23 was a year of um, obviously interest rates changing and the market changing a little bit. So uh, we worked really closely with our architect and the city on getting a product that we know will fit this market and fit the tenant demographic that we're shooting for. Um, you know, part of what Anthony will talk about is hitting that 80%, 80 to 100% AMI, um, which is an income level for the area. And so that's a big part of this is making sure that this project uh, fits very well with what the community needs and so that it gets full and we're able to give good returns. And so we submitted for our plans at the end of last year in December um, to the city, and uh, we've already gotten comments back. Uh, we're on our first round. So very, very good to see that we got our first round of comments back in about six weeks, um, which is which is pretty solid for most of the cities we deal with. It could be you know three months. So we're happy to see that and they're working well with us. Um, so this year, Q2, we're expecting construction to begin. Um, that would be permits in hand with the foundation starting in quarter two of this year. Our builder estimates uh, between 18 and 24 months for this build. Uh, there's no secret, you know, Sandpoint gets a lot of snow. It is a cold winter up there. And uh, we're very used to that, building in Missoula, building in Idaho and Oregon. So we're used to those timelines and our builder is as well. And so um, that's why we give that that extra time, just knowing that we're going to be building through a couple of different season changes. Mm -hmm. So expecting to deliver this in Q1, this would be the first building. And so we'll phase this project, um, starting the second building, uh, between six and 10 months behind uh, the first one. And so as we uh, start that first one, get it framed up, um, we can start uh, the second one. And so basically um, that'll bring us to a Q2, Q3 for that second building lease up to begin. Um, and then 2027, Q1 stabilizing building two and refinancing. And so 
it's definitely going to be a process to get this done. It's a large project, um, but it's going to be well, it's well thought out. The design is very, very good. We'll talk about the design next. And then it's a 10 year plus hold. So that's our target exit. Awesome. Thanks, John. And I'm going to jump or you're going to jump. Seniors going to jump here into the rent own gap. Why we kind of choose a market and, and what big factor what we look for in these investments. Yeah, thanks, Tony. So whenever we look at a new project in a new area, we always look at what we call the rent versus zone gap. And, and that really tells you, you know, what's going to drive uh, a couple things. One is occupancy and two is rent appreciation. So, uh, you know, Sandpoint is a perfect example of that. Uh, median home price in Sandpoint today is almost 800000 And you'll see the chart here. Uh, it's it's forty six hundred dollars a month to own a hundred thousand dollar home right now in Sandpoint, and and we can rent that a very nice, well appointed unit with very similar finishes uh, for sixteen to you know seventeen hundred, which gives you a difference a sixty five percent discount. Uh, it's cheaper by sixty five percent to rent versus own, and so. <clears throat> That's why we know that that our project is going to be successful because Sandpoint is growing. Uh, there's a lot of really good employers there that are expanding, such as Schweitzer Ski Resort, Kodiak Air, which Tony will talk about in a minute. But uh, it's not often we see a gap this big. Uh, we're and and this is the primary reason we're so excited about it. Absolutely. So I'm going to jump into location. One thing I want to talk about before jumping into location um, is the growth of Sandpoint. So, um, you know, the reason that home prices are expensive is because the area is growing and not enough product is being delivered to that market. Just simple supply and demand, um, you know, demographics. But oh, since 2020, Sandpoint has grown by 26%. And last year alone in 23, where everything slowed down, Sandpoint still grew by 6%. So even when the market is slowing down, you know, home prices are expensive. People are still coming here because of its natural beauty. So I'm going to jump into location. I'm actually going to jump into um, Google Maps here because this will help show you the location. So um, this is Sandpoint. As you can see, it's wrapped around this massive lake. It's actually the biggest lake in Idaho. And it's um, <clears throat> also right next to, you know, mountains, right? So some massive tall mountains, the Selkirks, the Cabinets. Um, then you have Schweitzer Mountain. So Schweitzer Mountain is the biggest resort in Idaho or Washington. It's bigger than Sun Valley. It's bigger than McCall. Um, it's And it's expanding. So Altera just acquired it. Altera owns Steamboat. They own Mammoth. They own Deer Valley down in Park City. They own Crystal Mountain over near Seattle and about 12 other resorts. Well, they just acquired Schweitzer this last summer. And if you look at their history, when they acquire a resort, they put a lot of money into it and they blow it up, right? So they also acquired all the real estate with it. So they're going to be selling homes up there. There's already four, five, six, ten million dollar $10 homes up there. They're going to open up another thousand acres. So that's going to draw people alone, just that resort. And that's only one factor of this um, project and location. So as we zoom in here, so this is um, this area here. This is downtown Sandpoint. So it's kind of historic. It's beautiful. If you, you know, kind of click in downtown, this is, you know, what it looks like. It's a beautiful walking downtown right next to the um, city beach here. And the city beach here, um, the Western Best Western was acquired by a company worth billions, and they have submitted plans to build a multi-hundred million dollar resort there. Um, I think interest rate increases slowed that down a little bit, but um, that is currently the plan, along with a brand new condo building that was just built there. And they currently have you know units on the market for four to six million dollars. And so our site is about eight blocks away from downtown. So it's this northern parcel here. Um, and then we sold, actually, we know the owner of the, the southern parcel here. He is planning, actually talked to him not too long ago. He's planning a small hotel with a lot of retail there. So it'll be great for um, our tenants, great amenities for them. And then around our site, as you see, you know, Lighthouse is about a $300 million business. If you guys have Lighthouse dressing, um, there's, there's this facility here. There's another facility here. Those are all jobs right next to our facility. Lighthouse is headquartered out of Sandpoint. 
And then you have Cochava, which again is, is near downtown. That's a massive tech company. They have about 200 employees and they have a, they're a, they're a large, large company. They have some major um, employers that employ them. And then you have Kodiak Air, which has, I think we, were, we actually just toured the facility. They have over 300 employees working at their facility, which is also just right around the corner. And they are also growing. They have expansion plans and they are hiring constantly. And they have their biggest issue is there's no housing for their employees. So they can only hire so fast because there's nowhere for their employees to live. So we've already contacted the owners of all these companies and are working out, you know, trying to work with deals and try to get, you know, their employees to live in our housing. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a feeling of why we chose the location we did and why we chose Sandpoint. It has growing population, growing jobs, and then its natural beauty is is incredible. I mean, this this lake here is gorgeous in the summertime. It's it's a massive tourist town, both winter and summer, which is leading to growth. All right, now we'll jump back into the presentation here. And so that's a little bit about um, the location. Again, that's why we chose it. Um, these are some of the employers, as I just spoke about, that are near our property and in Sandpoint. They're all um, large employers that will employ our tenants in our building. And so now we'll jump into the investment summary. So what can you guys expect in this project? So um, we're raising about $21 million for this project. It's a 40, um, actually it's a $42.5 million total project. Um, there's a lot of contingency in that. We're hoping to beat that price and deliver better returns. But if we don't, uh, we're still going to deliver incredible returns. So uh, we're projecting a eight to whoops, an eight to ten uh, percent average cash flow over the whole period. Um, that's directly going to be related to interest rates. So if the Fed decides to decrease rates, right, these cash flows can get better. If they increase them, it could you know go down slightly, right? That's the world we live in right now. But um, luckily, we are going to have enough equity in this either way for it to be um, very recession proof. And if the market continues to go down, we are still going to be safe in this investment. Um, we're offering 21,000 shares in that $21 million investment. Our minimum investment is $100,000. Um, and our equity multiple conservatively over the 10 year hold is about two and a half to three X. And again, that's very conservative. This project, as you can tell, is is going to cash flow. It's going to do well, but it's also speculative, right? This standpoint has been coined as a, you know, Aspen, a um, Tahoe type city, you know, a park city where this resort is growing, but we're early, right? So in Aspen, the average home uh, rental price for an apartment is $4,000 a month, right? So we're performing 16 to 1800 for our two twos, you know? So if we, you know, continue to see the growth that we have with the amenities that we're offering, we could easily be up in that range over our hold period for this, which obviously would give you an incredible return on your equity. Um, as mentioned, 10 year hold. Um, and the reason that's a 10 year hold is because A, this is an incredible location and a property. We believe in the market, but also to get those op zone benefits, we have to hold this asset and work on this asset for over 10 years. Um, our splits are very conservative at Cornerstone. So we do 85 15 splits. And the only time that that changes is when we sell the asset, if we've returned all your capital, then only at that time it's a 70-30. So if we sell this deal in 10, 15 years, we're getting 85-15 split for that entire time as general partners. And so here again, here's some, you know, just up close projected returns. So IRR 15 to 18%, and that doesn't include the tax benefits you could get if you're a op zone investor. Uh, we're building this at an attractive cap rate, and we're hoping to beat that, of course. We are working every day to still cost engineer this, bring down the price, and still offer the amenities that we are offering. Um, and again, this is, of course, new construction. All right, Senior's going to jump into why we structured the finance in the way we did, and uh, a little bit about the deal here. Thanks, Tony. So our total costs uh, with debt and equity is comes in right at about 42.5 uh, million. Um, this is a, a new construction project. And so the timing of how we how we time our equity and debt uh, combination is very important. Uh, we plan on building the first building with uh, pretty much all cash, get that completed and begin lease up. Uh, we do that for a couple of reasons. One is so that um, we protect our uh, investors' uh, capital 
but also that um, our construction crews with the timing of seasons, we can time the, the uh, start of the second building at the best time. And so uh, the way it'll work is, is, is we'll, we'll launch the construction loan on at the beginning of the second building. Uh, we're very conservative on our construction. So uh, we like to be, you know, 50 to 55% loan to cost. Uh, the loan terms, uh, typically we get a 24 to 30 month uh, interest only uh, construction period with a three year mini perm so that once it's least stabilized, uh, the, the term, the, the rate will be fixed. Typically during construction, we're one and three quarters to two and a half over SOFR. Uh, the interest only period, 36 months, amortization, 30 years on the mini three year perm. Uh, once it's completed and rent stabilized, uh, we're going to do a, a refinance with Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Uh, this is where the agency part comes in. And so we're a preferred lender with uh, or a preferred um, client with Fannie and Freddie. So what that means is, is, is we're able to get really good financing. Typically, what we'll do is, is we'll borrow more than what we uh, owe on our construction loan. And so... That means that we take cash out and, and when we take cash out, we our goal is to return capital. John and Anthony and I's goal is to return capital as fast as we can to our investors. And so that's a nice lump sum and that we'll be able to return when we refinance with Fannie or Freddie. That's important for our Opportunity Zone investors also uh, so they can meet their 2026 uh small tax obligation that they'll have, which would be about perfect timing for that. Typically, we like to see those uh, loan to cost for Fannie Frank financing at about 65% of total costs. Uh, we're very conservative in our debt service coverage ratio. That's what you see there, that DSCR. Uh, so that's usually one and a fourth to one and a half times the net operating income. Uh, we, we kind of base these on a, on an interest rate of about 6%. That's pretty conservative over the last 15 years or so with Fannie and Freddie. They are non-recourse loans, which means that, uh, if for whatever reason, the market changes and rents drop and values drop, as long as we're making our loan payment, uh, the loan will not get called. Uh, typically what we like to do is, a uh, what we call full term interest only. That's a 10 year interest only over, a, a and then a 20 year uh, amortization following that. Uh, we like to do that for a couple of reasons. One is it optimizes cash flow to all of you. And it also, um, limits the amount of tax liability. So anytime you pay principal down on a loan on an investment property, it's a taxable event. But every dollar that you pay in interest is deductible. And so we would rather give that money to you as investors than give it to the bank and create a taxable event. And that's why we do that 10-year uh, interest only. Awesome. Thank you. A couple, a couple of points I want to stick out there as well is, um, you know, we're basing this off a 6% rate. Um, right now, uh, if we got a Fannie Mae 10-year today, it's about 5.5%. I looked at that earlier today. And so if the rates get better, as we kind of talked about, if the Fed does decide to decrease rates over the couple of years we're building this, that refinance amount could get better. So what we're really looking for here is that 1.4 to 1.5 DSCR to give you guys a conservative investment and give you guys the highest risk adjusted returns, right? So we're not trying to over leverage this and give you guys you know, the highest returns because if it goes bad and something does bad happen, we don't want to lose the assets. So just a point there, that number definitely could go up if rates get better. You know, if rates go down to four and a half percent, right? I mean, that's just, you know, the same payment and we can bring out more debt. So that's kind of the idea behind that and why we uh, structure it that way. And additionally, again, I just want to say again, if any of you guys have any questions, we're going to answer them here at the end. So put them in the comments and we will answer them uh, once we're finished up with the presentation. All right, Senior's going to tell us a little bit about Opportunity Zones and Capital Gains Investors. So if you, this interests you, um, this is a huge advantage. Yeah, so Opportunity Zones uh, were created 
was a bipartisan legislation that was part of the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act when Trump was in office. Uh, and opportunity zones uh, were designated in areas. Actually, the way it came down from, from Washington, D.C. is legislation was passed at the federal level and then at the state level, each governor had the opportunity to take uh, submissions from different cities in their own states that uh, wanted to be designated or have a designation of an opportunity zone for capital investment. So here in North Idaho, Post Falls was the, uh, was the only municipality that, that uh, designated an opportunity zone. And, and John and I, uh, some of you are in River Falls. That was the first opportunity zone project here in North Idaho. Um, what an opportunity zone does is it, is it creates a, another vehicle if investors have a capital gain. And so a capital gain usually is triggered if you, you know, sell a stock or any kind of asset for more than what your basis is, right? So typically, typically this happens with real estate. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of a 1031 exchange. That's a, a, a good way to defer taxes, but there are rules with um, a 1031 exchange, including debt replacement. Uh, opportunity zone, if you sell a property with a gain that has a debt on it, there is no debt replacement. You can just roll the proceeds right in the opportunity zone fund. Um, and just at the end of December, uh, 2026, there is some tax that will be due, and I recommend you talk to your tax advisor about that. But we have a lot of investors that come into our zones that are actually planning for uh, estate planning because they don't want to burden their estate with uh, debt. And so it's a great way to eliminate debt and still defer gain and put it into an investment that's going to be good long term for cash flow. Um, the great thing about an opportunity zone that a lot of people uh, really like is as long as you hold on to the investment for 10 years, any gain that you have after that 10 year period up and over the original investment is completely tax free. And so we've had uh, investors already sell real estate, whether that's fourplexes or single family homes, we've had them sell uh, Bitcoin, all kinds of stuff. And they'll roll that into the opportunity zone. And if, if and they hold, as long as they hold it 10 years, if they sell it for more than their original investment, all of that is completely tax free. So it's, it's a really nice benefit. Um, and so that's, that's the basis of the op zone. There are a little, a couple little nuances. Feel free to reach out to us. This is our third uh, op zone. Uh, projects. We're pretty well um, versed on the ins and outs. Obviously, we recommend you work closely with your CPA on how it applies to you. But um, that's the basic outline of how Opportunity Zones work. Awesome. All right, property future. So we uh, already paid for a massive branding package on this property. So we are going to make this the place to live in standpoint, right? It's going to be the tribute, right? We're going to have sense of pride in where our tenants live. People are going to be excited to come home. And if they can't afford a house, they want to live in standpoint. This is where the tenants and this is where the locals are going to want to live. I mean, we're going to have a pickleball court as well outside the covered parking elevator. It will truly be the place to live and people will be excited to live there. So we're not building this project to be the cheapest option that people just hang their hat on, you know, and want to get out as quickly as possible. We're going to cater toward the seniors that are moving to the area, right? That want the elevator, want the beautiful view, because our fourth story is going to have a gorgeous view of Schweitzer and of the lake. And so uh, we wanted to, you know, make a branding package that brings everyone here, right? Brings the community. We're going to have events there. We're going to manage it closely. And we are truly going to make an entire culture out of this project. And we honestly could not be more excited to bring that to life. Um, also, it's gonna have a coffee shop and co-working space. So the idea there is um, a place for people to mingle, hang out, buy coffee, support the community, meet with you know investors if they're in town, whatever they want, right? They're gonna go there, hang out, but they can also 
work there, right? So they can walk to the doors. There's going to be co-working space. We'll have memberships buy into, be able to work there. So if they're a tenant there, if they're in the community, they can get out of their house, get out of their unit and work there and have this entire culture to be a part of. And then with that, there's going to be office space as well. So, you know, six by eight, 10 by 10, these office spaces that will allow one to two people to work out of. And additionally, we'll get revenue from that as an investment standpoint, but we're going to have this entire culture, right? Because work from home is not going anywhere. It's just increasing this hybrid idea and people from standpoint are going to be, you know, working from remote. And if they want to live in an apartment, they can also rent an office right down at the bottom of their unit. And that's kind of the idea that we're doing there. And it's been proven in other markets. It's been proven in Missoula. There's a project in Missoula that did a similar concept to this. They were pushing the market and now their rents are 20 to 30% higher than the entire market. They're getting you know, 22 to 2,500 for one bedrooms, and they're getting almost 3,000 for two bedrooms. And so that's kind of the concept we're taking from another community, implementing in this one, which even has a higher potential of growth. Uh, site look ahead. So this is the site. So this is one of the buildings. This is building number one of the tribute. Um, the corner there, those are going to be three bedroom units. They're going to be gorgeous. Um, they're going to, you know, four story. Again, it's going to have gorgeous views. You're going to be able to see the lake, look over the city. It's the tallest building in the area. Um, we're going to have the, that's what, that'll be the coffee shop corner there. And then to the left of that will be co-working space. And at the end will be the rec area. Building two will have the gym, locker rooms, and then more, more co-working space. And, um, and then the bottom picture there, that is the design for our storage. So there'll be the undercover storage here to get out of the snow. And then every single tenant will either have storage on the main level in the building or at the end of their parking space. Again, so they have skis, kayaks, paddle boards, golf cl you know, clubs, whatever it is, they can just take them out of their car and throw them in their unit, not bang up the walls. And also, again, on an investment standpoint, we can charge a little bit of revenue for this to increase returns for our investors. And that's kind of our goal is to, to deliver a product to the community that the community loves, but also generates incredible returns for our investors. And then the bottom right there, um, just to kind of show the culture, we're going to have gas fire pits out there uh, with the pickleball courts. We're going to have this beautiful, beautiful area. I keep on saying it, but that's really what it's going to be. It's going to be a hangout spot. It's going to be much cheaper than it is to buy a house there. So people that are, you know, traveling there um, can work there. And I forgot to mention earlier, there's also a brand spanking new um, 20 plus thousand square foot medical facility right next to this. Kinixu Health just built a building. So we're going to have traveling nurses here. We're going to have medical professionals here that are going to work right next door. So that's another exciting um, piece of this development is we have a expanding and a blowing up kind of medical industry in Sandpoint because that services basically everywhere from about halfway to Coeur d'Alene all the way to Canada. Sandpoint services all of that medical. And there's there's a good amount of population there. They also service parts of Washington, Northern Washington and parts of um, Northwest Montana. So um, that's a huge part of this development as well. Um, side plan, John's gonna, Junior's gonna jump into um, the side plan here. Yeah, so Tony talks a lot about the exterior. You know, one of the things, um, if you wanna go back, Tony, real quick on that last yeah. slide. Just looking at the exterior, you know, the city of Sandpoint has some very interesting uh, nuances in their code for what they want it to look like on the exterior. And that's a big part of the reason why we added, you know, a really nice big tribute logoed sign at the location we did and, the, and some of the masonry rock and some of the siding and, um, and paint color finishes. So that kind of drives a little bit of that for us. And um, we like that because it means that they care about the design of their community. Um, you know, the city has some very interesting ways of, of making people build certain things and, and all, all markets make, you know, are that way for certain cities. But this one really is trying to keep this town, um, you know, very, very uh, Northwest feel, um, very rustic. And so that's kind of the vision for the city. And we want to fit that with them as we build something that they love. Um, and so if you want to go to the site plan next, um, the site plan came together, you know, it started with a bunch of building, you know, first renderings were just a bunch of buildings spread out throughout the property. And then obviously now we came to this with just doing two buildings. It makes a lot more sense to have um, just two buildings instead of, you know, a bunch of separate buildings. Um, and the site plan really works well for the flow of traffic. 
Um, you know, we, we're getting some, we're getting the uh, light poles that are currently on the property on Boyer Avenue there, getting those moved over across the street. Uh, that'll make a big difference for views from the project. Um, and just working with the city engineers, they've, they've worked well with us on how we're going to go with the, uh, the, basically the, the ins and outs of the property and locations of all of our amenities. So you can see in the, the bottom left there, you can see our pickleball court and you can kind of see, you know, really a lot of this design is around, um, where snow loads go. Um, you know, snow is a big pro big part of Sandpoint. And so, um, where snow is pushed and dumped on the property and, and probably taken out eventually if it's, if it's a heavy snowfall year, um, guides a lot of the site plan, um, as that's a big thing in Sandpoint. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a beautiful project and a, and a lot of good space for tenants, you know, plenty of parking. It's a big deal to have plenty of parking, um, large units, big windows, um, lots of those different things that keep tenants um, staying longer. We want tenants to lease and, and stay as long as they want to be in Sandpoint. Absolutely. All right. So these are some of the, so the main level floor plan here. So you uh, kind of, I spoke about got the coffee shop on the corner, the co-working space here with some office space as well. And then we have, this is um, storage lockers for our main level tenants. And then we have a little rec area here. There'll be card tables, uh, pool table, you know, kind of idea for people to hang out, a beautiful fireplace. We're going to have a fireplace that goes in and out so people can sit in outside, enjoy the fireplace. And inside, it's going to be um, an incredible amenity. And then uh, our fourth story here. So you can kind of see some of our floor plans. They're um, different, you know, they're same on the first, second, third, fourth story. But the two twos I want to point out. So we designed those because um, the issue with ski towns or these resort towns is they just increasingly get more and more unaffordable and that removes the locals, but that also removes the service workers, right? So if service workers want to live here, they want to enjoy the amenities that this offer, they can split a unit, right? So instead of offering studios at, let's say, you know, 12, 13, 1400, we can offer two bed, two baths that have split masters. So if people want to rent these for, let's say 1700, well, $850 a month becomes much more attainable for our two bed, two baths. And that's kind of why we design them that way. And then we've got the spacious one bedrooms for, you know, young couples or retired couples. And then the three bedrooms, um, we have a couple different designs there. They're both, you know, designed for either that kind of lodgy feel, that ski condo feel. We will probably have, you know, some three month stuff for people that go here for just skiing, um, some furnished units as well. And then we will have, uh, bigger three bedrooms for, you know, small families that want to live in a uh, community like this instead of buying or renting a house. Uh, brand attributes, as you can see, kind of some of the reasons we chose this, as you can probably see, Sandpoint is adventurous. It's a place to go and explore, go skiing on the weekends in the summer. The you know biggest lake in Idaho, it gets massive. The lake gets up to, you know, 70, mid 70s. So it's, it's a gorgeous, you know, vibe place in the summer as well as the winter. So that's kind of where we pulled our attributes from. That's where we designed our colors. Um, the name Tribute came from the tributary, which is just down the road as well, the tributary into, um, into Ponderay there. So people will say they live at the Tribute, right? Instead of instead of a boring you know apartment home, it's the Tribute. We live at the Tribute. And that's kind of the idea behind the branding attributes and why we chose uh, what we did. Um, that kind of goes into here, why we developed that name, the Tribute. Um, it's very important to us to have something that, again, people can call home. Uh, we're the general partners on this deal. So uh, we've all worked extensively over the last three years designing this project, putting our own money into this project. We all have our own dollars invested right alongside you. We've we've written checks in this deal already. We've spent a significant amount of time and money on this deal. And we have spent hundreds and hundreds of hours on this deal as we speak. Yeah. Uh, Avenue 5 will be uh, managing it. So uh, Avenue 5 manages about 100,000 units across the country. They know the markets, they know to enter markets. Um, we, we chose a national company because no one can really do what we're looking to do in this community. The other managers aren't quite used to this scale of a project offering these amenities. And so we got to bring the big dogs in and we got to show the community what this kind of project is. And, and we need the marketing, the expertise behind it. And also with a big management firm, it gives the better returns and it gives the um, consistency that we need for our investors. Uh, we've been designing this project for about three years uh, with these two fine companies right here, Baker Construction 
Um, they're currently building, they've built two other projects for us. They're building a project in Bend for us. And this will be their uh, fourth project with us. They've done an incredible job. They are incredible leaders and we trust them deeply. And then uh, Forte, I mean, gosh, we've probably designed a half a dozen projects with uh, Todd by now. He's an incredible architect, very um, high attention to detail and, and really doesn't miss a thing. And so uh, we continue to put our trust in him. Um, these are some of the projects we have under management under construction right now to show our track record. We um, are building Mullen Crossing right now in Missoula. It's basically one of these buildings. It's a 68 unit, um, 84,000 square foot building. So we have expertise already in building a very similar building, how to cost engineer it, how to bring it to market. Um, and so we are very excited to build two of those. Uh, additional offering information. So this is just a little bit more about the offering, about our splits. Um, we kind of went over that already. Um, we do have an acquisition fee and it's a development fee as well of only 3%. Most firms from what we've seen charge about 5% for acquisition and development. We've combined it into one. Um, and then um, we do have a management fee. So we manage this. We have the asset management at the end. Um, but of course, everything you see there is already built into the splits that you're seeing. So the IRRs, the cash flow, the equity multiple, all of that is built in already. So we're not we're not giving you project level returns. We're telling you what the investor level returns will look like. So if you guys are interested, I'm going to jump into the uh, process to invest. So if you guys are interested, I encourage you to book a discovery call uh, with our team. We will review any questions you have. We are a fully transparent company. So we want to make sure you have every resource possible to make sure you're making the right investment. Um, with that, I want to point on one thing. When the project's done and completed, we do do monthly distributions. We give you monthly updates. We give you monthly reporting so you know where every penny of this dollar is going or this investment is going. We want to make sure you know, you know where the money comes in, where it's going out, and where, why you're seeing a return. So if returns fluctuate, you know exactly why. We are just fully transparent. There is no sacred cows, um, as we would say here. And so we just want to let you know that, that um, from the day you invest to the day you know, you're know you seeing cash flow, we're, we're transparent all the way along. Um, after you book that discovery call, you review the offering. Again, let us know if you have any more questions. If you commit to invest, then you start filling out the um, the accreditation docs, you give us your letter of accreditation. This is a 506C offering for accredited investors only. Uh, we'll need a driver's license and avoided check, just a couple other miscellaneous items to make sure we are in SEC compliance. Uh, once we are done, you get it invested, you wire the funds. Um, as soon as we're done with the fund, we close it up, it's done, and then we move on to our uh, next opportunity. So this is kind of a, a one, you know, one hit investment. Um, and then you realize the uh, potential return. So this is going to have, we'll depreciate this. We'll give you a lump sum when it's completed. We'll depreciate it. We'll depreciate it every year to give you additional tax benefits for cash flow. Well, cash flow, it's going to appreciate. We'll refinance. There's all the beautiful things that real estate offers, right? And then the reason you develop, right, is because we are building this significantly under the market value. So um, that market right now is probably between a, you know, five and a six cap market. Um, and we're we're building it above that. So you're going to have those realized returns. That's that's why we develop. Additionally, building in this market is tough. Buying in this market is even tougher. I mean, there are no assets for market for sale in this market. So if you want to own in Sandpoint, you pretty much have to build or significantly overpay. So we're choosing to build and bring investors alongside us in this journey. That's kind of why we chose to do this, right? And that's it. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to contact me. There's my um, email or Sarah. She works with me as well on the investor relations side. Either of us will be able to answer any questions you guys have. And now I'm going to jump into Q&A. So I um, already answered the question of, is the uh, lake swimmable right now? It is very cold, but I will be swimming in Coeur d'Alene this weekend. It's about 34 degrees doing a cold plunge tomorrow. It's not very fun, but skiing right now is incredible in, uh, at Schweitzer right now. Um, Trevor asks, there are two lots, so it is the northern one, so right behind Super One. Uh, we know the owner of that, as mentioned, he has development plans for that. He put off zone money into that, so he has every plan to develop it. We're the northern parcel, just over four acres there. Um, 
Can we invest through a Roth IRA? Absolutely. We actually just got a Roth IRA investment today in this deal. So uh, we are very comfortable with Roth IRAs. It just needs to be a private placement. If you have any questions about that, we can walk you through the entire process. We have done dozens and dozens and dozens of those investments and know like the back of our hand. What is DSCR? So DSCR stands for debt service coverage ratio. Basically, it's how many debt payments can we pay with the cash flow we receive from the property, right? So if we receive a million dollars and our payment is $500,000, we have a two debt service coverage ratio, which means we can pay two debt payments. What is the year one tax benefits look like? I'm not familiar with new construction, construction advantages. Um, so year one uh, during construction, we will have some minor losses. They're nothing uh, major. They're going to be just some losses that you'll get in your K-1. Um, but then year one of completion, we will cost segregate it. We will give you back as much as we feel uh, that we can that first year to also hold some back to depreciate it through the longer hold period. Because our goal is to give you as much tax-free wealth as possible. And again, we'll do that through a tax segregation study. What are the rental comps? Yeah, that's a great question. So on the affordability gap, so the average rent for an apartment in Sandpoint is $1,660, um, and that ranges significantly. So you have homes renting for three, dollars $4,000. You have waterfront condos that go up to six, dollars $7,000. And then you have some affordable stuff. And there's currently two projects being leased up right now. So one is a Schweitzer housing project. Um, they have a large range, but that one's really dictated for Schweitzer housing. Um, and then you have another one, which is a three-story walk-up, uh, more workforce housing, uh, lower market rate in a different location. And those are getting you know anywhere from 1,100 for smaller units up to about 1,900 for bigger ones. Um, and we're going to be right in there. So a, a good determining factor of where our rents will be, uh, we are going to start them at 80% AMI which is basically if you take 72,000, which is the average household income in Sandpoint right now, you take 80% of that and you times that by 30%, that's where our units will start, which is right around 1450. And then we'll go up to um, about 100% AMI for non-furnished units. And then furnished units will get a little bit higher than that. But again, those are dictated for a little bit higher income, nurses, traveling people, um, and kind of that short term, which you know, gets a little bit more expensive because they'll be fully furnished units. And that's kind of ours. So we're we're targeting this project between 80 and 100% AMI and workforce housing for context is anywhere from 80 to 120% AMI. And then again, we're going to work with our property manager to push rents and give higher returns as that market increases, which we firmly, firmly believe that it will increase significantly over the whole period of this asset. Does the cash flow from the co-working membership coffee shops office space go to the tribute or is that structured through a separate entity? Nope. All of that feeds through the tribute. So that is all going to be distributed to our investors as part of rent. So for example, if you know we're getting $3,000 a month for the coffee shop, that's just going to be counted toward the gross revenue down to the NOI distributed to our investors on a pro rata basis. All of it. Co-working space. If we start charging for the gym, all of it, everything is going to go to the investors on a pro rata basis. So we're not, we don't have any separate entities there. Um, the coffee shop though will not be operated by us. So we already have a couple interested tenants there that will just lease the space from us. They'll create the culture of the coffee shop. They're manage that. We're multifamily operators. We aren't coffee shop operators. So we leave that to those professionals. How are you guys handling utilities with tenants? Are each of the units submetered? Every unit will be separately metered and tenants will be billed um, um, rubs, so utility bill backs. So um, they'll be, you know, basically billed anywhere from about $60 to $100 for, um, you know, some of the utilities. And then they'll be able be billed separately for electricity. Are you guys allowing pets? I know it's silly question, but pros and cons of allowing pets. Absolutely. So we allow pets in every single one of our units across our entire portfolio. Animals are important to tenants and they will choose to not live at our facility without that. So we're going to have a dog wash station. We're going to have a dog run. We have a perimeter around for people to walk their dogs. 
And for that reason, we do LVP throughout. So when we turn this, we have a lot of expertise in this. We've designed our units to allow pets an easy turn. So if we allow pets, um, we don't put carpet in there. So we have easy turns again, but yes, we, just, we allow them and that will be additional pet rent, pet deposits as well. So if the pet does cause issues, we will keep their deposit and that will go into fixing any of the issues that the dog or cat uh, made on the property. Have you worked with Avenue 5 Management before? So we've been working closely with them on our Ben project um, over there. And then with this project, we've been working with them on this project for about a year and a half. I know Jolene, she's a the vice president of this on a very good basis here. So we have a great relationship with them and we're bringing them um, on more and more as we develop more and more projects in our company and acquire bigger and bigger projects. How long do you anticipate the offering being open? So we have already raised a significant amount um, for this deal. It's an op zone investment. Um, I think to date we're, we're pushing over 7 million raised of the total offering. Um, and I expect it to be a quick turnaround. So um, as mentioned, we're breaking ground as soon as the weather kind of flies. So um, I would expect, you know, over the next, let's say, you know, 90 days is kind of our goal, but we're, it's a first come first serve basis. And we have a lot of action on it already. Do you have a pro forma and when an expected timeline for distributions? Absolutely. So distributions, just for context, we'll send out more information along that, but uh, distributions start at 95% occupancy. And so that's going to be late 26 to early 27, right around that refinance period as well. Um, but again, as soon as we get 95% occupancy, we begin distributions on it. And we do have a full pro forma uh, built out and we have our property management Avenue five. Uh, we just got an updated pro forma from them as well to back our rents. Again, they manage 100,000 units. They have data that is incredible. So they know these markets. And so we rely heavily on them to tell us where these rents are going to be. What does the NOI yield on cost? So NOI, um, this property will, you know, I have to look at it exactly, but it's going to gross well over 3 million a year. Um, our NOI yield on cost, also known as cap rate, kind of similar idea. We're choosing, you know, we're, we're pushing, it's going to be between, between um, six and a half and 7%. Um, we're pushing, obviously, to be higher than that. We are still going through cost engineering. We're having large firms, consultants look at this project to make sure that we're building a the most efficient building at the best price and delivering the best return. So um, that's kind of where we're at on that. Do you have a committed operator for the coffee shop and co-working space? So um, not committed yet because it's about two years out. Um, but, you know, I know the owner of a lot of coffee shops here in Coeur d'Alene and in Sandpoint. Um, a lot of you guys may not know, I actually grew up in Sandpoint, so I have very deep connections there. I know the owners of most of the businesses I spoke about, and so we are able to pull a lot of the levers just from our network there, and uh, we have we have very good uh, fish on the hook, let's just say, that are very interested in that space as we speak, but nothing committed to date. Will the developer pay for any cost overruns? And will that be added to basis? If there are any cost overruns, often the developer is responsible for a cost overrun separately. So we will have a large contingency. We'll have a general partnership entity level contingency and a builder contingency. And we will sign a gross contract on this. Correct, senior? We will be signing a... Um, it's a fixed price contract. Fixed so price contract with what that means is 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 we'll agree on a contract and a price uh, with Baker, and they're obligated to build it for that. And uh, and we win both ways. If if costs come in higher, they're responsible. If costs come in lower, we get to keep the difference. So it's a nice arrangement on that fixed price contract. Right. They want to keep on doing business with us. And we have many more developments to do. So they want to impress us, which we love. We work with them, as mentioned, this will be the fourth project. So we have a deep trust and we know their capabilities and what they can do. But to answer his question, no, the developer is not, is not paying for cost overruns. That is the answer to the question. The answer is no. Good point. Please discuss financing, et cetera, construction, loan terms, LTC, et cetera. So I think we jumped on that um, earlier in the presentation, but a quick highlight. So um, our construction loan right now, where um, where interest rates sit, banks most banks are requiring about 50 to 55% 
um, loan to cost. So they're willing to lend up to about 55% what we see today. So we're going to raise um, the additional inequity. Um, loan terms right now, I mean, I can talk on a project that we're getting, we're right around seven to seven and a half percent on construction financing. And then long-term debt, just looked at Fannie Mae earlier today. We're sitting right around five and a half percent if we were to fix the debt today. Um, but our Jerome Powell has mentioned that they are expecting to decrease rates, but that is not built into our performance. We are expecting, we are not expecting that. We're not trying to predict the future. We are predicting uh, what this project will look like if it was done today. Now, if they do decrease rates, it just gets better for us and our investors. Um, and that's that's a high level there. And then again, we'll have all this in our presentation to, to discuss further. Do distributions discontinue if occupancy dips uh, below 95%? No, they do not. So if occupancy, um, you know, let's say we see major supply increases like Arizona and Texas are seeing, and a lot of those areas have 10% vacancy. Um, if that happens to us, um, highly unlikely because of how difficult it is to develop in Sandpoint. But if it does, distributions do not stop. So the reason we start distributing at 95% is a Fannie Mae requirement for the refinance on new construction. And so we hit that 95%, we start you know, the refi process and we start distributing. But if occupancy, if we have a bad month and it drops to 92%, we're still gonna distribute the funds that we have and we'll still be cash flowing at a at that basis. That's why we keep that healthy DSCR as well, because we want to be able to distribute, even if even if vacancy went down to 80%, we're still distributing cash flow to our investors. The total equity raise for this project is $21 million. So big project, uh, just over 42 million, um, and uh, it's only going to get better from there. So hopefully we can drive that cost down and not use much contingency and deliver a better product to our investors. And we're going to work every day as general partners to make that happen for our investors. All right, that is the final question. Appreciate your guys' time today. We'll be sending out a recording of this along with the presentation. Anything you guys uh, need answered, reach out to our team. Again, we'll be happy to answer it. So thanks everyone. Have a good evening. Thanks everyone. Bye.